So what is up everybody? It's Derek and Brad here with Paranormal Watertown and we have traveled to Watertown, New York? Yeah, apparently. So yeah, we've been doing this for <laughs> three years and we finally made it into our own backyard. Yeah, I mean, I can literally see my house from here. That's how close we are. Hey guys, so look at this view. We are up at Thompson Park in Watertown, New York. And here's a quick overlook. So yeah, so what brings us up here today is the Thompson Park Vortex. Now this is a spot that is on the Haunted History Trail and as you guys know, our goal is to visit every single one of those locations. I think it's up to 89 locations or 84. Or it, oh, it fluctuates every year. Yeah, it's pretty up there. I mean, more are added all the time and if certain owners don't want to be on it, they get taken off, so. And then new owners get put on there so yeah so we are up here at thompson park so brad what do we know about this supposed vortex okay so legend is that it's some sort of time vortex um claims are that if you step into it you can be transported to another location um other claims are that you just kind of disappear for like an hour or two and then show up again um, other people have reported being near it and being dizzy and sick to their stomachs and stuff like that. So there's a lot of uh, myth associated to it and we're going to try to see what we can find. Um, one thing that is kind of interesting um, that lends a little bit to this is Area 51 when it was first made. Um, the code name for it was Watertown, Watertown, Nevada. And also... Um, John, uh, John Dulles, I think is his name, local At, here. John or Alan Dulles, I can't remember which one. Either way, he's uh, head of the CIA back in the day. So that's why other people kind of give this little credence, you know. So it may be like some sort of like time travel vortex that the CIA created something or like something? Something like that, but the fact that he was the head of the, the agency like fuels people's... Yeah, John, John Dulles, right? John, I think it is, yeah. I don't know why Alan is sticking in my head. He was another, I think. <laughs> well, yeah, he was a Watertown native who came directly to the CIA. And then he um, pretty much said that Area 51 reminded him of his hometown, and the nickname is Watertown or Watertown Strip. Yeah. Because there's nothing there. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so we are going to go try to find this vortex. Um, a lot of people, you know, say they've been up here, they've seen it, and... There's a whole sign that labels where it is or where the main vortex is. I guess yeah, supposedly, supposedly it, it shifts. Moves. Okay. And that if it does, that lends credence to my theory that it's um, the underground power lines, which are very close to the surface, and then the rock that the park is sitting on, kind of like an EMF generator that just affects people. But we'll find out. So we're yeah. here for. We're gonna investigate it, and we will see what we can find all right so i'm just turning on my body cam guys we are gonna go search for the vortex and it's starting to rain a little bit now so hopefully we can avoid that but um brad's just looking up because we were both right um there is a john dulles and an alan dulles both from watertown both associated with the military um, but it is alan dulles who was associated with the cia yeah. um and Brad just saw that he was associated with some pretty big um, programs in that. Yeah, the Bay of Pigs was, uh, Invasion, MK head of, Ultra. Head of CIA during the Cold War. He oversaw the 1953 Iranian coup, the 54 Guatemalan coup, uh, the Lockheed U2 program, and Project MK Ultra and the Bay of Pigs Invasion. Yeah, so that's, so. that's some pretty heavy stuff. I mean, Bay of Pigs in the Cold War alone leads to a ton of conspiracies about you know the Kennedy assassination and MK Ultra to this day is pretty much brainwashing yeah um, and the fact that the government has actually acknowledged that it was real yeah for many years as oh it's a conspiracy and then they're like nope here's all the paperwork yeah and also with um, the vortex and like I think you will see in the sign too with the vortex like there's a big alien because yeah. obviously area 51 associated with it 
But just in the past year, the disclosure that the government has um, had with alien craft and alien budget for UFO and extraterrestrial stuff, yep. it's just pretty interesting. So is this the stuff they talk about? Like, Yeah, this is the fitness stuff. Yeah. Okay. I never thought, oh, fitness trail. Okay. I never I, thought that, I thought we saw the vortex was on that side of the park. I did too. I never remember that the park keeps going this way. Yeah. I never have a reason to go over here. All right, so here's the Watertown Rotary Club. Charles R. Hyde Memorial Fitness Trail. And does this even say a vortex on here? <laughs> beam no so they don't even label the vortex <laughs> down here at all it's somewhere between here is that where we we're at and here um yeah because yeah, that's the city the pool lot. all right yeah yeah so i said if we walk the trail we're gonna find it so we got a quarter or a third of a mile to <laughs> like it's not creepy enough i'm wearing a body cam in a park <laughs> We're just trying to stay safe. We're trying to find a vortex, actually. All right. Yeah, so this, a lot of people probably don't even know where this is. No. Like I said, we've been, I'm pretty much a Watertown native. There it is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Like I said, I forget that the park extends all the way out this far. Yeah. So I've always been looking for it over there. Yeah. All right, so after a little bit of a delay, because we have no idea how far this park extended, we have found it. It's right, there. right here. Thompson <laughs> Park, Vortex, Watertown's Area 51. Yeah, so let's get you guys up closer to this. Oh, there is a trail up there, All right, and we are going to go down that trail. But yeah, guys, so this is actually a trail back here, so we're going to walk back here. Brad does have an EMF detector. We did bring a little bit of our equipment. We brought a portal box um, with SB7 Spirit Box. We did bring a REM pod. Um, I did bring a digital recorder, see if we can capture any EVPs. So we are going to do a mini investigation here. Our goal is to try to come up here at nighttime. So Brad's checking right now because what his theory was is maybe there's power, power grid or power lines. Yes, I know a lot of the power lines that stretch between the two sides of the park they were buried underneath but not very deep so like my theory was either they're unshielded or the shielding is broken down or they're interacting with the elements in the rock that they're sitting on top of causing like I said an EMF generator that just messes with your body because that's what it does when there's too much yeah so that could also cause hallucinations and disorientation yeah it cause time so. loss I mean hell when we were at the conjuring house um, not even just the contrast, a couple places we've been, uh, we get affected where we're in a room. We're like, man, we were in there five minutes, and you look at your recorder, and you were in there for a half hour or yeah. something like that. All right, so I don't know how far this trail actually goes back. So, yeah, Brad's just we're documenting if the ground itself is giving off any EMF. Doesn't seem like it. So this is actually pretty cool back here. I would assume it probably circles around. <laughs> I don't know. Let's take the scary part. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we do. If it's scary, fuck it, we're there. Nothing. Now, of course, you got the creepy birds chirping. Uh huh. Like this at night, with either night vision or just flashlights. Yeah. Would be butt clenching. <clears throat> But, I mean, as you can see, it's a pretty well-worn path. Here, let me get out my digital recorder and do a quick EVP as we're walking through. Okay. Since, yeah, we're far enough away, you shouldn't catch anybody. Yeah. All right, guys, so I got the digital recorder out. This is file number one. Let's see if I can show you guys on here. Brand new file. Fit will focus. There we go. File number one. On my digital recorder, we are walking through the Thompson Park Trail that's right outside of the vortex sign. So I'm assuming this is where all the action supposedly takes place. So I'm just going to roll on the digital recorder.
This place is kind of creepy, Brad. I'm not gonna... <laughs> like... Is there anyone or any entity back here that wishes to speak to us? Well, this is a trail right back here, Brad. This might be where it comes in. You know how you could go left or right? I think Brad's in a little clearing. Anything out here? What's this? Is this another trail or what's over here? That goes towards the zoo. Okay, so that's... Let's see anything over there. Yeah, you want to walk back up and around and yeah. see what's this is just a really odd clearing in the middle of it. Yeah. This is where the aliens land. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they can break out the port. Like maybe I mean this is a pretty small trail, so if that other section just loops back around to the front, we could just run a portal box all the way through and then run it back here. Yeah. See what there is. All right, so this is file number two on my digital recorder. We are actually going to run the portal box through or the SB or the Hack Shack spirit box through the portal. See if we can come up with anything here. We are actually out at the beginning of the trail. I'm going to see what we can get here. All right, so that's on. Up, Brad? Yeah. Right, three. About three minutes, three minutes, fifteen seconds. We're on the portal through here. We're just gonna walk around. Yeah. Seeing if anything pops up through here. Is there anything back here that wants to communicate through this machine? Oh, does this trail go further back? Oh. We just found that this trail goes deeper than we thought. Okay, so maybe if there's an X, did they say they marked this spot, the vortex back here? Oh. Yeah, this goes a lot deeper. So we turn this on at three minutes on the recorder. It is now 12 minutes, so nine minutes of nothing. And I have no idea how far back this trail goes. no idea how far we're at. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we might have to come back and see. Looks like it's getting darker out. So I'm going to shut this off. This is file number three on my digital recorder. Um, we just walked for 12 minutes into the other trail that's behind the clearing. And um, and we have no idea how far back this trail goes, so it's starting to rain pretty hard now. So we're going to head back, but I threw on my digital recorder, 
Um, the walk down here was documented in my body cam, but I just wanted to show you guys like how far back this is. Yeah. Like it's crazy. Is that going off because my phone? What's that? Was that going off because my phone? No, it's probably going off. Oh. The thing is, like we've lived here. I mean, you've lived in the area longer than I have, but we never knew this existed. Yeah, it's nuts. Or at least not to this extent. Yeah, so we walked for 12 minutes down through here. We didn't get any um, voices through the spirit box. But you never know. It might have captured an EVP or... 12 minute EVP session. Yeah. So if anyone's here, can you talk into my direction? I'll be able to hear you. I have tools that can pick up your voice. Or can you show yourself and guide us out of here? That would be creepy just to stand here in the dark, uh -huh. do a night nighttime investigation here. Especially in IR. Yeah. Hell, even with flashlights would still be creepy, but just looking through your IR <clears throat> screen would just be... Is anyone here associated with the military? Can you tell me if you're part of a project? Anybody here that's lost, if you come to visit and you can't find your way back home? <clears throat> Honestly, keep expecting to see like a dead body or something. <laughs> That'd be nuts. What'd you guys find? Oh, cold case. <laughs> And this is something we can definitely return with more people because it's huge. Oh, yeah. The only problem is, though, like doing the research on it. Yeah. There's not a lot, like, a lot of it that I found was like, um, what's the word? Um, like message board websites. Yeah. Like, Oh, the vortex of water and people just comment stuff. I can't, I can't really find like any actual credible information. Yeah. Look at this tree. Just Look at how it's weird. Too. Yeah. I'm just thinking that it's just an odd shape. Yeah. Bent tree. It's like a straight up 90 degree angle. Yeah. So we actually made it back here in about six minutes. We were walking for what, about 12? Yeah, I think we were walking slower. slower yeah. Than we were back. So yeah, guys, this is back at the clearing. So once you get past the initial, I don't even think those people know. I'll let them know though. I mean, that's goes. To... Yeah. So if you walk at a fast pace, we went about six minutes in there. So yeah, just to document. Yeah, because we walked slower through it than we did coming back. Yeah. So if you walk at a slow clip, it's about 12. If you hustle back, it's about six minutes to where we left off, just to know how far we went back into there. Yeah, I mean, it's still quite a fucking hike though, either way. I still think this is weird. Random clearing and it looks like they maintain it. Yeah. For what? I don't know. Yeah. All right, so we're going to review our footage and see what we can find. We'll let you know. So guys, we just finished um, exploring the Thompson Park Vortex. Um, it goes way back further than we thought. So we're going to have to come back and do a part two. Um, nothing through the portal or spirit box, but that doesn't mean we didn't get anything on our digital recorder. Um, no EMF spikes, but... Like I said, it's a large area. Just because we didn't get anything right off the bat, 
we're not sure, but it was a pretty cool place to explore. But we will for sure go back and see if, um, you know, there's anything hidden back there or anything more to explore back there. Um, we walked for about 12 minutes and yeah, it just it started, kept going. yeah, it just kept going and it started to rain. Now it cleared up a little bit, so, but we're going to, I mean, this is like we said before, right in our backyard, so we can shoot right back up here and see if, you know. Yeah, literally a minute drive from my front door. Because yeah, some of the explorers, we're not always going to find stuff that's paranormal, even though it's listed on that website. Um, yeah. Casey's cottage was actually pretty quiet, even though we did capture a couple EVPs, but... You know, that's how it goes when you do paranormal investigations. It's not like the TV shows where every single location has something, like, dramatic. Yeah. Sometimes you get nothing, sometimes you get a little bit, and other times it's crazy, so. The other thing, too, is on those TV shows, they're at the location for, like, a week. Yeah. <laughs> everything they found is condensed down into a one-hour show. Yeah. So, I'm sure if we spend a week somewhere, we can do a one-hour video that's nothing but action. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, so we will catch up with you guys once we go over the evidence.